everyone. Dr. Mandel here with you. Hopefully you're having a pleasant day or night. I want to say welcome to everyone out there. This program is going to be a little complex. Everyone out there is going to be able to relate to this because we all eat food. We all cook. We use oils. My job here is to continue to educate you. This is about the damaging effects of vegetable oils that can affect our immune system, our brain, our joints, our heart as well as many other parts in our body. And I want to bring out some very important tips. This is a pretty heavy duty program. So please bear with me and I'll try to do my best. I have lots of notes kind of all over the place. I'm kind of do my best. We are broadcasting live. So I'm going to do my best where I will not have to repeat this program. So just bear with me. We, the, we're looking at oils, uh, primarily the common oils of like canola oil, uh, soybean oil, uh, vegetable oils, peanut, sunflower, soft flour, cotton seed, grape seed, margarine, even shortening, or actually any type of uh, fake butters that we are talking about. Now, we've heard there's a lot of controversy about this topic, and I'm here to say that I'm not here to take stand or defend anything about one thing is better than the other. There are cons and pros, although I will bring you the education behind us. Hello, chat room. I will bring the education behind this so I can substantiate my point about oils. Now understand, everyone has oils. Everyone uses oils. Everyone cooks with oils. I am not here in any way whatsoever to tell you you should not be using oils, but I'm going to explain to you the facts behind the oils that if you're over-consuming certain oils, this can be leading to many particular conditions, like even thyroid problems, metabolism problems. Uh, and I'll explain why. Uh, now, you can see a few of these oils right here. The common uh, oils right there, the vegetable oils, the corn oils. And a few things I want to bring out to you. Remember back, uh, I don't know the, the age of our whole audience, but if you just go back several years ago, your mother always told you to stay with you know healthy oils. The American Heart Association has always told us to stay with healthy oils, polyunsaturated oils, monounsaturated, which is better like your olive oils. Uh, but they're finding things out today, particularly the recent study of the uh, American uh, Heart Association that's telling us that coconut oil is bad for us. And I know people out there, and I have patients out there who live in other islands that live to be 80, 90, 100 years of age living on coconut oil when they were infants. And they're saying that coconut oil is bad for you because it's a saturated fat. So the media is still training us about oils, and oils, the difference between a, a, a monounsaturated or polyunsaturated is that it stays liquid at room temperature. A saturated fat is going to be hard at room temperature like coconut oil. So we need to understand the differences here. But remember that the old days, okay, stay with polyunsaturated, stay with oils. Oils are good for you. Now we have to understand that yes, olive oil and certain polyunsaturated oils will help bring down cholesterol levels. Okay. That's proven. All right. But there's a lot of things that we don't know about this, but we have to understand that there's a lot of GMO. There's a lot of rancidity. There's a lot of heat that's being given to this. And when we are changing the molecular pattern of certain oils, which I'm going to explain to you, we're going to get different effects. Now, a lot of the diseases that we have today, okay, realize, and I'm going to explain this so thoroughly to you, you're going to love me after, I hope, but you're going to see why these are so inflammatory. You're going to see why the inflammation of these oils are causing problems like pain, inflammation, like uh, diabetes, like heart disease, uh, and many other conditions like Alzheimer's disease, uh, potentially even female problems, because you are getting a lot of inflammation of omega-6s. Omega-6s are proven to be inflammatory. So this is what we're going to talk about. Okay, so let me go ahead and let's just look at this next one here. This just shows you uh, more oils and a few things I'm going to touch on about this because I want to go into some facts here. Uh, realize that we're looking at a major million billion dollar market here. And this market is obviously their job is to hook up with the American Heart Association to say, hey, listen, we know that these oils are good. And even though we know that they're unstable, if you look at my uh, 
writings that I wrote on my page here, uh, if you look down in the comments, uh, I wrote that they are getting away with murder to consumers. Many of these oils are heated to very extent, to very high temperatures. Uh, they're refined. They're even bleached to give them a longer shelf life. There's no way that these oils can stand the shelf and be uh, like organic. It's impossible. The exposure to these excessive amounts of heat and oxygen, they undergo turns. Uh, it turns them into trans fats. And these trans fats are poison for us. These trans fats are cancer, are, are clogging our arteries. These are unnatural molecular structures in which the molecules have become twisted and rigid. These molecules also get into our cells. They sabotage, their, sabotage the structure. These oils are high in free radicals. They're known to cause accelerated aging and degenerative diseases at the immune system, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, uh, chronic inflammation. Uh, that's primarily what I wrote. You can read that. And that's the truth because you are taking something that's heated. You are taking uh, uh, areas within those molecules and you are changing them. Now, what about our, our lards, our butters, our, our, uh, our normal healthy fats like our coconut oils? Those are healthy. And I'm going to get back into that in just a second. But I want you to understand that we're looking at conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, uh, psychiatric, autoimmune, metabolic problems. And I'm talking about like th thyroid. I can't tell you, I guarantee you that so many of these people of hypothyroids are tied into the oils that they're eating, type 2 diabetes, heart disease. And, you know, it goes to all types of inflammation because we're getting so much omega-6s. And these omega-6s is or are very, very serious. I'm going to show you and I'll show you the charts. I'll go over all this stuff with you and you'll have a better understanding. Uh, so uh, the other thing, let me go ahead and move on here because I know uh, I got a lot to say and my eyes are kind of all over the place as I do this. But if you look here, that doesn't look appealing. That is rancid oils. People living on these fried foods. You don't know what these restaurants do. You don't know how often they change their oils. If there was a study that I read about people who eat French fries and fried foods twice a week, the mortality rate went boom off the charts because of these trans fats. Trans fats is the killer. These hydrogenated trans fats is the killer. This is what's leading to heart disease, clogging arteries. Uh, and then the omega-6s of all these oils, guess what? Those omega-6s is inflammatory. And when something inflames, things grow, cholesterol attaches to where it grows, it sticks in the ear, it starts to plaque, and it clogs up arteries in the heart, which is a heart attack, in the, in the, in the vessels, which is a stroke, to so the lungs, a pulmonary embolism or emboli, whatever it is. But here is, this is fried food, it's dirty, it's toxic, it's poisonous, and you don't know what you're eating. So I'm telling you that when next time you go into a restaurant, you're going to think twice. Okay, here is another one. Look how nasty this is. These are pictures taken out of restaurants. Okay, I don't want to keep showing you this because you're going to get sick. You're going to say, wow, I'm not eating that crap anymore. My health is too important. Jeffrey Jefferson, you mentioned extra virgin olive oil. That is a good thing on the list. And I will talk about that. Okay. Yes. You guys are ahead of me. I will talk about all this. I'm going to get to that, but I need to show you the downside before we go to the upside because I want to allow these things to digest. Okay. Let's move over here. Grass fed beef. This is an amazing, amazing grass fed beef. It's so good for you. But the AMA, uh, American Medical Association, American Heart Association says, oh no, there's, there's fat in there. Don't eat that. Of course you want to eat this. Look what you're getting, free organic hormones, no antibiotics. I'm afraid to eat chicken today. I'm afraid to eat meat today. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what's been fed. I don't know how it's been treated. And you're getting what they call four to one essential fatty acid ratio, which is a decent fatty acid ratio because uh, the omega-6s should be closer to four to one, three to one, or as close as we can get at one to one, which is impossible. But people are 20 to one, 25 to one, that much omega-6 as compared to omega-3. The three times conjugated linolenic acid. Now you're saying, well, what is that linolenic acid? And I want to explain what it is because you really need to understand how important this grass-fed beef is. Conjugated linolenic acid, okay, 
uh, linoleic acid, not linoleic, linoleic acid, refers to a group, refers to a group of chemicals found in the fatty acid, the linoleic acid, and these are primarily the dairy products and beef that are the major dietary sources. But listen to this. The, the conjugated linoleic acid is used for cancer, uh, helps prevent hardening of the arteries, which is atherosclerosis. It prevents obesity. It helps weight loss. It's caused, uh, and obviously bodybuilders use this. It helps reduce food allergies. Uh, this is a beautiful thing. So they have found that this might help reduce body fat deposits and improve your immune system significantly. Let's look over here. If we look here, we're looking at omega-6s. Now, we're looking at oils. And the omega-6s is highly, highly, highly inflammatory. We're talking about Alzheimer's brain neurological uh, pain. We're looking at joints that become inflamed. We're talking about arthritic conditions, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune, diabetes to Alzheimer's, cardiovascular. You can read that list right there. And I'll leave that up for a few minutes. Uh, but just read that. So a lot of the foods that you're getting, they're taking those oils and they are turning them into trans fats. Those oils are in your cereals. They're in your processed foods. You need to see what you're eating because you are taking toxins. You are taking chemicals and molecules that have been added to it. And I'm going to get to something that uh, if I can find it real quick, that this is kind of scary. Uh, let's see if I can find this. But the, the point that I'm getting to here is I want to find this article and it tells you the processing. And here it is. It's about vegetable oils. Okay. Now, here is the production of canola oil. Just to give you a little insight, uh, they take canola seeds. Uh, oh, wait, they don't exist. Canola oil is actually made from the hybrid version of the rapeseed. People know it about that. And that is genetically modified. It's heavily treated with pesticides. So what they do is they, hit, they, they heat the rape seeds at unnaturally high temperatures. They oxidize them and it becomes rancid before you even buy them. They process them with petroleum solvents to extract oils. They heat them some more to add some acid. They remove any nasty wax solids that form during the first processing. Then they treat the oil again with more chemicals to improve the color. They deodorize the oil to mask that horrific smell from that chemical processing. And obviously, of course... If you want to take your vegetable oils one step further, just hydrogenating it until it becomes solid, now you have what they call margarines and other trans fatty wonders. So people are wondering out there how bad these things are. There's a lot of things that go, goes on. I, I, I want to say it this way. Uh, let's get off of here. Um, let me see. Before I go in there, let me just speak to you for a second uh, so you can see my face a little bit. Um, you need to really understand that these processed foods, now realize Imagine an organic food that you get off the shelf. You get an organic apple, uh, an organic, uh, uh, whatever organic fruit or vegetable you get, it doesn't last too long because there's no preserves in it. There's no pest, there's, there, there's nothing in there that's really altering that chemical molecular pattern of that life inside what you're eating. When you see things on the shelves for an abundant periods of time, there is something that has changed its molecular pattern or something that has been added to that. It can be sulfites and certain fruits, okay? But something has changed that molecular pattern, causing that thing to sustain time on that shelf so it won't get rancid. In order to take something that is naturally squeezed and put it on the, on the shelf, it will never last. It can't. It's impossible. It's literally impossible. It's never going to last. So when we're getting like the organic, the, the extra virgin organic coconut oils, this is squeezed. And again, coconut oil has its own natural antibacterial, anti-parasitic, uh, uh, antimicrobial, antiviral. Uh, now the natural olive oil, the, and I recommend obviously the same thing. We want the, the, the pressed organic extra virgin olive oils. That's excellent. The monounsaturated, it's going to help bring down your bad cholesterol. It's going to help you. It's going to do wonders for you. Let's move on here because I know I'm kind of moving around. Let's look here. Omega-3s, omega-6s. For our new listeners, you need to understand a little bit about what omega-3s are. 
Uh, you have two parts in omega-3, the DHA, the docoso hexanoic acid, that is your fish or sea algaes, your fatty fishes, uh, which are excellent for you, like your salmon, your sardines, your herrings. You have your EPA, your ecoso uh, pentanoic acids, uh, ecoso pentanoic acid, your fish, your sea algaes, as it says there. Um, but your ALAs are uh, your chia seeds, your flax seeds, your walnuts, your plants. Uh, then we have the omega-6s, which are most of all of our oils. If you look there, between the omega-6s and omega-9s, a lot of them over uh, lap each, lack each other where they are considered both. Um, but on the same token, I want you to understand that I am not here to knock each oil. I'm here to let you understand that there are some oils better than others. But realize that when you heat something up or when other people have already heated it up in a different nature, they denatured it and put it into a different form than what it was actually made from, uh, that's where the problems start to arise. And that's what we're talking about. Now, realize if we come here, the comparison of omegas, as you look here of the saturated fat and you look at the, the, the saturated fat of the coconut oils and look at, uh, you can see how saturated it is, but it has the linoleic acid in there. Uh, and you can actually see that is not filled with uh, the, the, obviously the, the, the bad fats. We're talking the omega-6s. Uh, the omega-6s are the blues and the oranges are the omega-3s. You can look at that graph. You can come back to that. You can kind of have an idea a little bit about how much omega-6s that you're taking in regularly. All right. I want you to understand that you come back to that chart later because I'm, I'm trying to move on here. Here's a chart that shows you the differences of percentages of omega of a sixes and threes. A little bit easier maybe for you to read to give you a little bit of better understanding of how much omega sixes you're taking in. And I'm trying to relate all of this to your condition because a lot of your conditions, your inflammatory problems, remember every disease known to man is inflammatory related. Heart disease, diabetes, immune dysfunction, immune disorder, everything is interrelated to inflammation, joint pain, disc pain, radiation, neuropathy. Uh, it could be eye problems, headaches, everything is related to inflammation. If you can make a simple change by reducing uh, uh, the excessive amount of oils that you have been taking in, uh, you potentially will see miracles. And I've seen it with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people by just making a little change. My goal today is to help you so you can help yourself to give you a door that you can open up that you now see a light that has hope because doctors will not talk about this kind of stuff. They're going to treat you with medicine and it's not going to be your answer. If you look here, the omega-3 to omega-6, the ratio, this kind of gives you the ratio uh, and we can see coconut oil uh, is very close. Now, there's a little bit of omega-6s, and look, and there's not a lot of omega-3s, but the advantage of coconut oils uh, are, the, are, are extremely high. Uh, it is great to cook with. Olive oils are actually uh, not as, as, as volatile, but um, just want to give you an idea. You can look at that, and I think that is a great little chart for you to look at. Uh, let me just get a few little other facts together that I wanted to bring out to you. Uh, realize that we understand uh, about oils. Oils are important. Uh, if, you, if you ask me the best oils uh, that you should always be eating, the extra virgin olive oil is uh, extra virgin cold pressed organic uh, coconut oil as well as the extra virgin cold pressed organic olive oil are great. Avocados are great. Grass-fed meats, grass-fed butters, your nuts, your walnuts, your pecans, your macadamia, and about everything else, you need to be careful. Your peanuts are highly acidic. Your cashews are highly acidic. I love peanuts. I love cashews. They don't love me. They're highly acidic. Your omega-3s, your sardines, your mackerel, your kingfish, your wild salmon, they're extremely high and rich in omega-3s. Now, here is another very important thing I want you to realize. When people talk about omega-6s, omega-3s, they say, I just ate all these oils. I want to add more omega-3s. Yes, you need to add more omega-3s. But the problem is, when you have too much omega-6s in your diet, the omega-6s through certain chemical metabolic changes does not 
allow all the omega-3s to assimilate the way it should be because there's too much omega-6s in your system. So the only way to really get around that is to start cutting back on your omega-6s, okay? And then you can do your homework mainly in oils. I recommend oils. Oils are good for you. You need oils. I'm talking about people that are excessively using lots of oils, heating it up, and realize that from the research, the research shows that these are causing significant inflammations and conditions in the body. It's not, it's, it's limiting the effects of, of organs and systems trying to repair that can't because we constantly bombard our body with these oils and you're going through this whole continuous roundabout cycle. The doctors are missing it. I'm telling you they're missing this. You've got hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism because now you're inflammatory, your immune dysfunction because most of these hypothyroid conditions are immune related. I'm telling you, they're immune related from potentially diet or other uh, something inflammation. It's usually related to inflammation. It's usually tied right back into the immune system. But I will tell you that when you start adding more omega-3s, omega-3s have the greatest natural anti-inflammatory magic that you'll ever get from any, any food on the earth. I'm telling you, they are one of the best. All your cell membranes are made up of omega-3s. Your eyes, your, your, your tissues, your viscera, it's all about omega-3s. All your whole metabolic Everything that goes on is about omega-3s. Your, your body needs omega-3s and lacking omega-3s puts yourself in a crisis. So uh, let's be smart. Uh, let's really take good care of ourselves. I really hope that, that this gives you a good understanding. Uh, let me go right here so I can at least see your face here. I uh, really appreciate, Chatters, you being here with me. I really hope this puts a good message out to the world out there because uh, this is really so important. In all respect, please don't think I'm here knocking oils. I take oils. I take the right oils. Uh, the olive oils, the monounsaturated are excellent, lowers uh, cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, raises the good cholesterol, lowers total cholesterol, even lowers tri uh, triglycerides. Uh, excellent, I think is excellent. But make sure you're getting a good uh, uh, organic extra virgin. It really makes a, an important because you want to make sure it's pure. And when they say organic extra virgin, it's pure. Uh, don't start buying uh, things out there because they're cheaper. The little money that you'll spend more now, you'll be saving a thousand fold later. I really mean that. Um, I ask you to subscribe to my channel. If you haven't, to continue to get the cutting edge uh, information on nutrition, check out my self-help videos. I have so many hundreds of great ones from herniated disc to forward head posture. Uh, I specialize a lot in biomechanics of the spine. And if you got poor posture, which most of us do, sitting at a computer texting like this, you really need to see those videos. I really believe it will help you. Um, also, check out my, uh, give me a like here if, uh, if you'd like to. Uh, check out my um, Facebook motivational doc. I try to get to those questions. A lot of the questions here on YouTube, please leave them below. Uh, it's hard to get to a lot of them, but I promise you people will get to them. They're highly read. They're highly uh, uh, written there uh, from people around the world. Uh, this is a, a good channel and uh, we're here to help each other. And anything I can learn from you, please share with me. And again, someone mentioned about eggs, eat your eggs, organic eggs. Don't start taking the yolk away from the, the egg white because what are you doing? It's like taking the oil and changing the molecular pattern. Guess what? I'm going to leave you with one thing. And I read this recently. It was an interesting story that I read. It was about the egg. And if, a, if God has made an egg perfectly and nothing's been uh, put to that egg, nothing's been changed in that egg, nothing's been heated with that egg, okay, the same molecular pattern. And that egg that was made from God can, can hatch a chicken. Wow. Imagine what that natural egg can do for your health. I think that's a lot to be said. Anyways, I wish blessings to you, your loved ones, uh, and make it a great day, and we'll continue to fight for good health together. Bye-bye now.